All right, welcome back, everybody. We're now talking about a completely new topic, but it's connected with algorithms. Uh, it's the introduction to complexity theory. All right. So complexity theory in the UC Berkeley view is one of the subfields of one of the main threads of computer science. One of those is theory. The bottom bullet there says theory, along with other fields like artificial intelligence and databases and systems and operating systems. Um, and others, here, listen here, graphics is my field that I got my PhD in here and here. So theory is one of the subfields, and within that, complexity theory is one of the areas of theory. You've seen this before. We've talked about algorithmic complexity before in this class earlier. <clears throat> We're talking about algorithms. Um, these are problems that can be categorized as being in several categories, and we're going to talk about those in this lecture. So this is kind of a heads up for what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos. So problems that are solvable, oh, sorry, tractable with efficient solutions in reasonable time. We love these. These are the simple, easy ones. We'll talk about that next. Intractable. Boy, that means it's doable, but boy, we're not going to be able to do those in reasonable time at all. Solvable approximately, but not optimally. So that's kind of a subfield of the tra intractable ones that, you know what, we found an efficient solution, but we only get close to the right answer. We'll talk about that as well. Have no efficient solution. We have no efficient solution at all and are not solvable, problems that you actually can't solve. So we'll talk about all five of those going forward. So the easiest case, <clears throat> tractable with efficient solutions in reasonable time. Okay, so we've seen these orders of growth that we use, the, the simple kind of soft categorization of the orders of growth of algorithms. And here are six right here. Constant, logarithmic, this is an order of kind of fastest to slower. Logarithmic, linear, quadratic, cubic, and at the lowest one is exponential, okay? So those that are tractable with efficient solutions in reasonable time are, see if my animation works, brink, everything but exponential on this list, okay? So that's easy. What it means is the order of growth is polynomial. The top right says polynomial. So all those guys, the order of growth is polynomial. Like a polynomial, some co coefficient times x to the k, okay? Um, searching for an item in a collection. Searching. What's searching? That's a linear. So that's a linear one. That's part of our family of things. Sorting a collection. Sorting, we typically say that's on the order of a quadratic. It's hard to do a sort. You try to compare everybody versus everybody, and that's kind of like a grid of things. Compare everybody here against everybody here, roughly, to do it inefficiently, and that we call that as part of the quadratic family, okay, at least in this class. You'll see that we can be clever about it in other classes, but for here, we'll call that part of the quadratic family. And finding if two numbers in a collection are the same, that's still, if any two numbers, a shared birthday, we talked about that one, and that's also a quadratic, comparing everybody here against everybody here, okay? These are called being in P, the family, the kind of family of algorithms that are solvable with a polynomial solution are called being in the set P, right? All the humans are in the kind of set of mammals, right? There's other people in there too, but humans are in the set of mammals, so all the ones that have polynomial solutions are in P. So if I say what is being in P, those guys that have polynomial solutions or the guys that are tractable with efficient solutions in reasonable time, okay? Intractable problems. So intractable problems on that list are the ones that are the exponential guys, okay? So um, we can solve them. We can still solve them, but I certainly can't solve them fast. I certainly can't solve them in polynomial time. So we talked about including exponential problems. Um, the image to the right, you see this image to the right, is a tree, okay? And an intractable problem might be something that's a function of the number of leaf nodes there. Because you notice if it's high, this high tree is, you consider it, let's say, Three, you say, well, start with a root, and you have one child, two children, three levels of children. So that's three height. Maybe there's four total height, but three height here. You have eight on the bottom. So the number of total leaves in the bottom is two to the height, if you start, if you don't count the top guy, right? Number of children. Two to the number of children you ever see. So that's, you know, if I need to calculate something about all the leaves, that's going to be an exponential number of guys. If I go down four level, four levels of children, that's 16. Five is 32. 10 guys is 1,000. 20 guys is a million-ish. 30 guys is a billion. See, it grows really fast. And we've seen that before with exponential growth. So these are called intractable problems. The best algorithm, the best solution to the algorithm is only 
an exponential one. Okay, so we don't have, the, that's not in P. It's not a polynomial guy, it's this intractable psi. Okay? We can solve this for small n, but I certainly can't solve it for the n. For this height of this guy, ooh, the height is 100. 2 to the 100 is bigger than anything we could ever compute in our lifetimes, so we can't do that. That's why we don't like these guys. We like to have some polynomial solutions to these kind of problems, but sometimes you just have, by the nature of the problem, nothing, no way to do it.